Hey, everybody, this is Charles Dobbins. I want to welcome you again to another episode of the best multifamily podcast ever. And today I have uh, who's turning out to become an old friend of mine, uh, Ed, attorney Ed Garrett from Cincinnati. And Ed is, um, Ed, say hello to everyone. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. So hey, let me just tell you about Ed. Um, Ed owns a company in, uh, you know, Ed is a law firm, but he, his company is called Credit Improvers. And he's a practicing attorney in, in, uh, in the state of Ohio. And his whole entire focus is on getting your credit cleaned up the right way. Now, I know many of you who follow my teachings and about how to buy multifamily, you hear me say the right way all the time. Well, Ed it does his business the right way uh, for his clients as well. So, Ed, welcome back to another one of our conversations. Um, it's so good to have you. Thank you very much, Charles. I look forward to uh, today's presentation. All right, so let me just, you know, with, with um, you know, all candor, I'll say that, uh, you know, back in 2010 with the market crash and things were, were challenging for a lot of people. It was very challenging for the Dobbins family as well. And uh, we got into some credit issues with some of our uh, lenders, with some of our, uh, um, you know, uh, vendors. And uh, once we got it all cleaned up and, and, and you know, tried to put the, uh, the um, pieces back together again, we realized that our credit was not what it should be. And I had done a lot of research in finding, you know, all the different people on the internet who tout that they can clean up your credit, you know, no guaranteed, all this other stuff. And, you, you know, if you just see these guys out there and, and some of them are set up, and, and Ed, you know, uh, as well as I do, these guys are set up as like an annuity. You got to pay them every month. Yes, and I think that's the first clue that whomever is soliciting your business does not have much confidence in accomplishing what they're setting out to do. Right, because uh, the process, go, the go process ahead, of clearing up the credit report for us is really a four to six week process. And then you're so done. Be, yes, that's right. So the, setting up a monthly payment plan makes no business, makes no sense at all for a uh, provider that can accomplish the task in four to six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just, you know, they'll work on one, one at a time. It seems like in uh you know, just bill, bill you as their, as another annuity. Yeah. And certainly their incentive is to have you to continue to make those monthly installments forever. Yeah. Uh, and, and one other point, Charles, there's a, both a federal law and here in Ohio, there's state law that governs uh, what are called uh, credit service organizations of which credit improvers is one. Now we're properly licensed and bonded but one of the requirements under both the state statute and the federal statute uh, is that you must disclose to the client at the time of origination the entire and complete cost of the program. So, I mean, we do it flat out. Our program costs $750, period. We tell you that on day one. There are no other charges. Those companies that are out there charging monthly fees, obviously, they have no idea whatsoever what you're going to be paying over time. Right. You know, and let me just say, for the record here, I highly, highly recommend Ed. Uh, and, you know, $750 is a steal. Once you uh, listen to this podcast and, and some of the results he gets for you, you will, uh, you will agree with me. Uh, but also, I just want to stay for the record. I, even though I am a lawyer, I, I don't receive any compensation from Ed. I just want, if you've got a credit problem, I want you to be in the right hands uh, to get it done correctly. And Ed is that guy. So uh, Ed, let's talk, you know, that one of the, the company that I'm talking about, they tout themselves as a law firm. Yeah, I know exactly the company okay. you're speaking okay. of. I, I was going <laughs> to say, of all, yep. <laughs> they are terrific marketers. I mean, I see their name pop up on Facebook uh, unsolicited emails, I hear it in conversation, I see advertisements, and they identify themselves as a law firm, which they are not. Isn't and in really? point of fact, unlike my program, there is never going to be an attorney uh, touch the file when you enroll with that other company. And on that pricing issue, as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago, they are in direct violation because they are one of the many that purport to do this for a monthly fee. 
But, Ed, you know, it's like fighting the Battle of Lexington and Concord, you know? <laughs> Without Concord being present. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's 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 move on. So, Ed, let's talk about what it is that, okay, you know, let's say, uh, put me back in 2010. Oh, please don't put me back in 2010. But, you know, put me back in the, in the time when you and I first started working together. And I came to you and I said, heard about you. I want to work with a lawyer because I know I'm going to get represented correctly. If, you know, you know, lawyers, you're going to become my zealous advocate through this process. What, what do you need from me to get started, Ed? Well, actually, we make it very easy. Uh, all I need to get started with any given consumer is their basic detail information, name, address, social security number. We assist the client in obtaining a copy of their credit report, and within 10 minutes of the client contacting us, we are underway in our program. And our program specifically to explain for those of your listeners who are not uh, familiar with it, we offer a program that is designed and guaranteed to improve consumer credit reporting by forcing the permanent removal of negative information from their credit reports. And the way that we do this is we first obtain copies of all three of their major credit bureau reports. We analyze that information and we identify everything that's negative. That is everything which is pulling down their credit scores. All of that negative information is then challenged for its permanent removal under the provisions of a federal law known as the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Now the key to the success of our program and what makes it unique is the fact that included within the cost of our program, I am hired as licensed attorney to assist in this challenge process. And as a licensed attorney, very familiar and very well versed with that statute, I can successfully force the removal of such information. Now, as I mentioned, the program comes with a 100% money back guarantee that flatly says, if we do not improve your credit reporting, we will refund 100% of your money. It takes about four to six weeks to complete our program, and the client will start seeing their first improvement in about two weeks. And I will add, Charles, that in the course of handling the credit reports of individuals over the past 25 years in which we have been in existence, we have yet to be required to refund a single fee. <laughs> Out of some 15,000 clients, we have improved every one of those clients' credit reportings, and we also carry an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, which is unheard of in our industry. Well, let me tell you something. I have no doubt, and, and I'm not, you know, trying to, uh, you know, any puffery here. I have absolutely no doubt that you have never had to return uh, a fee. And, and let me refresh your memory, because the first time you and I spoke, I heard you say that you, on average, increase a person's credit rating by X points. And then the next time you and I spoke, which was several years later, um, I asked you that question again, and you gave me the answer. Do you remember, like on average, if I came to you, what could I expect my, if I'm your average client, uh, my credit rating to, to increase by after working with you? My average client sees an increase in their credit scores from 80 to 100 points. That's exactly what you said. That's exactly what you said. And, and I could not believe it. But I'll tell you something right now, Ed, looking at you know, where I am now. Now, I, I just, you know, in full disclosure, I'll, I'll say, listen, I, I used Ed back in 2010. And then when, we, when my wife and I started, you know, buying more things, we, uh, we went back and, and wanted to make sure that we, our credit was as clean as possible. I contacted you again. You, you took care of me one more time. And I can tell you that our credit is above, is high, has gone up by over 150 points since working with you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And those are the kinds of results we love to see. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a fact. I, I, I know my numbers and that's exactly what happens. So, all right. So they get you the information. Now, what exactly, and this is kind of cool. I know the, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being a good attorney here because I know the answers to these questions before I ask them. Uh, but Ed, why don't you tell everyone exactly what happens once you, you open a file on me and what do I need to do, um, you know, sitting back in my house here in, in Massachusetts? Sure, Charles, we try to make it as simple as possible. From the word that the client 
uh, says go. I personally review their credit reports and I prepare challenges and defenses for all of the negative information appearing on their credit reports. And I spell that out in terms of three letters that I prepare for them addressed to the various credit bureaus. Now these letters are mailed to the uh, consumer's home. They simply sign their names where indicated, put them in the enclosed pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelopes. These go on their way to the credit bureaus. Now the next important moment is about three weeks from that point at which time the credit bureaus respond to the consumer by Hold sending on. to them. And I just wanna I just wanna give you a little perspective from my standpoint and, and for the people listening. It is such a cool and rewarding feeling when you get that big white envelope from Ed's office and you open up and there are the letters to your creditors all signed, sealed, all you have to do is sign it, stick it in the envelope, that stamp is already on the envelope, and you just send it right out, and you think, wow. It just makes you feel like, wow, I'm finally going after these guys. I'm finally gonna take some action and get this thing cleaned up. It's a great, great feeling, Ed. Thank you, hmm. thank you. And, and again, we, we try to keep it very, very simple. So in response to those letters, after they've been mailed in about three weeks, the credit bureaus respond by sending to the consumer updated versions of their credit reports. Now that's another package that's very nice to open because right on the front of it, it will indicate a number of items that have already been deleted permanently from the consumer's credit file. Yep. Now, the importance of those updated reports, in addition to seeing how much has been removed, is for me to then be able to see uh, which creditors have not yet deleted the information as requested. And client, of course, shares with me a copy of those updated credit reports as they receive them. And here's the important thing that is taking place at that juncture. Any creditor who has not yet removed their information, I will then communicate directly from my law office on my law office letterhead under my signature as attorney to contest directly through the creditors any items that have not been removed from the credit uh, report. And that is a very forceful and very successful letter that we write. And that is unique in the industry. Now, do they have a certain amount of time that they have to respond or take or remove it or automatically gets removed if they don't respond within that time frame? You know, the, the statute itself is a, is a little bit nebulous. Okay. It states that the credit bureaus have a reasonable period of time to respond. Typically speaking, that uh, works out to be about 30 days. Okay, all right. Okay, so then with that letter, they now they know that, that the client is being represented by counsel, so they deal directly with you at that point, or how does that work? Yes, any further communication will come directly to me, okay. uh, and then I communicate with the client. Okay, and this is all for the flat rate fee? That's correct. And one other thing about the fee, Charles, uh, we offer the program at $750 for an individual or $850 for a married couple. Uh, I know that uh, you have a broad appeal with your pod podcast, and I would like to extend a $100 discount to anyone who mentioned your name and enrolls in my program. So that would make the cost to them on an individual program $650 on a joint program, it would then be $750. Thank you so much, Ed. That is, is very generous, generous of you. That was not discussed beforehand, folks. Ed just did that, uh, you know, because of, of the past. I'm sure that we, Ed and I have worked together uh, for so long now, coming up on 10 years. Um, and and I, to this day, I still can't say enough good things. I, my clients come back at me and they say, Charlie, that guy did what, exactly what he said he was gonna do. And you, you can't get, you know, you can't feel better about endorsing someone than that. So, all right, so they get, now what happens after that, that window of opportunity, that four to six weeks, uh, you're, what happens? What happens if, you, if, you, if you're not where you want to be? Ed? Well, I'll continue to work on it. Okay. You know, from my point of view, it, it's only a few stamps. And I, I, in fact, continue to work on uh, clients' files as long as I'm making progress. Now, for example, one of the things that comes up occasionally is if I'm communicating with a creditor 
a lot of times I will be using the address that's provided on the credit bureau report. Now, a lot of times these are either outdated or they're large post office box drop facilities. So my letter has a lot of impact and gets a lot of results if it winds up in the right person's hands. But from time to time, if we're using these addresses that we're picking up from the credit bureaus, for example, my letter may not have the impact that we hope for. So client then, I typically advise them to go search uh, for a better address. And, uh, you know, they'll find either a notice or some type of communication from that particular financial institution. They provide that to me. I issue a brand new letter. It winds up in the correct person's hands and, re and results in the type of uh, change that we're looking. Okay. Now, now let's talk about particular situations. Uh, and one of the biggest ones that I get is uh, bankruptcies. What, when a, somebody comes to you that, that has uh, suffered a bankruptcy, what can you do for them? What can you tell them? What, what advice would you give? Well, Charles, I would definitely recommend they get in my program. And I will say in all frankness that those individuals who have been through a bankruptcy make my best clients. <laughs> and that's the, that is the truth for the following reasons. First of all, they have the most to gain because going through the process of payment problems, charge-offs, collections, lawsuits, the filing of the bankruptcy, and dragging it along during the pendency of the bankruptcy till discharge, they have a long, long history of derogatory information. Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, a, a very uh, ripe tree for me to pick fruit from. Yeah. And also, there are several different categories uh, of information. For example, if an individual has an account, there would be a trade line relating to that account, which is really old, but may contain a series of slow pegs. Then it's probably charged off, which uh, will show as a charge off item on a trade line somewhere. It's possible that the item was uh, sold to a third party collector, so there will be a collection line. And then the bankruptcy itself will be reported as a public record item, which in about 75 to 80% of all instances contains an error which is fatal to the reporting. So I have four opportunities on virtually every item reporting on a uh, bankrupt individual's credit history that I can attack with considerable success. And as you might imagine, going through that default and bankruptcy uh, time frame, the record keeping gets very old and none of the financial institutions by and large want to continue to try to service the records of an account that they know they're never going to be paid. So it's a very uh, fine opportunity to meet it, for me to go in and challenge the information and we have very good results wow. because the entire process of this challenge rests upon the legal responsibility under the statute of the reporter of credit information having the burden of proving that the information they are reporting is accurate, is timely, and is able to be verified according to records held by that creditor. And with an old dog-eared bankruptcy file, they simply don't manage it. And if they can't sustain that burden of proof, they are required under the law to permanently delete the item. Excellent. And I'm assuming this is pretty much the same thing for someone who has a foreclosure on their record. Very much so. And, and even uh, more advantageous to the consumer is the fact that within mortgage loan servicers, particularly in the states that have adopted uh, mandatory uh, forbearance requirements, that servicer has very weak records. They basically bundle the payment history up and send it over to legal counsel to proceed in the foreclosure, and they don't want any attorney sniffing around with regard to the servicing, the designation, whether it was foreclosure, when was it charged off. Uh, the mere presence of an attorney in that challenge process uh, usually works out very well for the individual. Okay, I've got two situations that uh, two clients have asked me to, to uh, ask you about. Um, first one is, that the this particular client uh, went and pulled her credit report 
and found out, uh, get a load of this, she found out that she was $60,000 in credit card debt, unbeknownst to her. Now, this was not a, uh, someone stole her identity. This was her husband had gone out, a little bit of a spending problem, and, and got about seven credit cards that he ran up to the tune of 60000 And the thing that shocked her was that she was listed on all of them, but had never signed anything. Mm -hmm. what, well, that, tell me about this situation. Yeah, that, that's, that's exactly uh, what I'm talking about in terms of verifying information under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. In that scenario, uh, among the documents that we can request in terms of validating uh, the existence of the reporting under the Fair Credit Reporting Act is the actual contract of debt, the signature card uh, or the file card for the credit card obligation. And, you know, when, when I get involved in that process, if they can't produce it, that puts them in a terrible position of trying to enforce the reporting. Uh, notwithstanding, they probably would have a terrible time uh, bringing an action uh, in collection of that debt if they can't produce a signature card. Well, what if they, he did this on the Internet and, you know, he just checked a box? Isn't that, you know, one way that you could possibly do it? Well, actually, it, it, and of course, this could be a state law issue. So I, I'm a little bit reluctant to talk in terms yeah. of all 50 states. But in the two in which I'm licensed, a signature is a signature which is verifiable. It isn't clicking a box on the internet, and the burden of proof is upon the party that's trying to enforce the contract. Hmm. So, you know, again, if, if, if they can't produce something with a signature, uh, I think that they're going to be hard-pressed to uh, uh, report the item. Now, now that a lot of times credit card companies play very fast and loose. They have a very high yield given the interest rate, and they have a very high yield given the charges that they can uh, bestow upon a delinquent obligation. And I think what, what they've decided from a business point of view some years ago is that they will take the high yield, high volume, and bear the risk that the details are not being addressed. Right. So exactly. the, the key is to, to get in, make your presence known, make proper challenges under the law, and you may be the one in 10,000 that uh, finds themselves in the catbird seat on that because the other 9,999 aren't doing anything. Exactly. Now, another situation, this, I mean, I could use the same situation for this person, but uh, another client had called up and said, um, you know, I'm tr trying to clean up my credit and I've got, you know, about six or seven old credit cards or credit cards on my report. And one of the reasons that my credit is not as good is because I've got so much available credit out there. And I did a quick little search on the internet for canceling credit cards and how that impacts your credit rating. So can you talk about that? Yes, I'm, I'm not a big fan. And I believe that the algorithm that is used with FICO, for example, uh, does not require anything more than one active trade line, be that a credit card or anything else. So I, would not recommend multiple credit cards for any individual uh, if their objective is to build their credit score and their credit rating. But I will add the following caveat. There is something called a uh, credit utilization rate. And what that is, is the percentage of balance versus the maximum permitted balance for a revolving charge such as a credit card. I tell my clients, and the scoring process uh, bears this out, that they should never exceed 60% of the maximum permittable balance for any given revolving charge account. So in my example where I say pair it down to one card, do so but make sure you keep that card balance, even temporarily through the course of a month, uh, knowing that you'll pay it back at the end of the month, treat it as if it were 60% of the actual permitted balance that does exist, and you'll keep yourself very clean. Uh, if, if it does require that you have two cards, 
instead of running, for example, 90% uh, credit utilization on one card, if you can have two cards and run them at 45% each, that's the instance in which I'd recommend multiple cards. Okay, so, but if, if this person has, has eight cards right now, uh, you, would, you would say get rid of seven of them. Correct. Okay, okay, excellent, good. Now, Ed, um, one of the other things I wanna to talk to you about uh, is um, something that you didn't recommend to me 10 years ago, but you did last time we, we reconnected, um, and probably because 10 years ago this, this feature didn't even exist, and that is uh, using credit karma. You said, you, uh, am I correct? The, the, re, yes. Okay, good, good. I went, you went silent there. I thought, wait a minute, I know it's credit karma. I, I, you know, don't tell me I'm, I'm getting this wrong. But you had me sign up with credit karma. And I got to tell you, Ed, I love that little feature. That thing is cool. Because I, I look at my credit all the time now. And I see exactly what's going on because of credit, credit karma. Right, right. And I, I recommend that for a lot of my clients because, as you might imagine, I, I have a lot of clients that uh, once they come to me, get really serious about their credit histories and their credit worthiness. So there's nothing sweeter to those folks to uh, take a little advice, have me clear items off, and just sit there and watch the charting of yeah. their credit scores on that instantaneous app. Exactly. And uh, yeah, it, it, it provides a lot of information. I wish, however, that it gave you all three. Uh, it will give you tracking on Equifax and on TransUnion, but for whatever reason, Experian is not included on that. But, you know, two out of three is, is certainly better than nothing. It is a free service, and uh, I recommend it for anyone. How does that work? I mean, before they used to charge you for your credit report, or you could only get it once, once per year. I mean, what happened? Yeah, they... They use it as a bit of a teaser to sell other oh, absolutely. programs. Absolutely. Yeah, but the hot one now, if you were to log on today, Charles, uh, probably for the next four days, you could see tax prep services okay. uh, and other things. And, and, you know, they'll look at credit monitoring. There will be, as you move up the scale, which now you have, uh, they will also have very nice credit card point back uh, offerings. Uh, to the best uh, and highest scores. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend Credit Karma. I'm, I'm not a fan of soliciting or rather signing on to the additional services, but, yeah, if you just want the free access to your credit report, by all means do so. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, uh, those days are, uh, those days are ba uh, past, uh, and I, um, you know, as a uh, Dave Ramsey protege, I, I, I pay cash for everything. I don't, I, you know, if I can't afford it, I don't buy it. So, amen to that. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, hey, well, let me ask you something. How did I know how I got into the multifamily specialty uh, of you know transactional law? How did you get into this area of the law? You know, it, it's interesting. I uh, my background is that I was general counsel for a large Midwestern uh, savings bank, and in 1993 they were acquired by a, uh, another uh, large bank, a large national bank, and I was able to parachute out at that time. So I was, uh, I was 30, I think I was 36 at the time, and a buddy of mine had an idea that he heard on a, a uh, talk radio program. I mean, you mentioned Dave Ramsey, and I can't remember the gentleman's name, but he was a syndicated program, and he'd just answer financial questions all night. And my friend said, I'd like to open a credit repair company, and I'd like to couple it with your law office, and to make it worth my while, since you're paying all that law office rent, uh, we'll work out a partnership, I'll do all the work, and uh, we'll use your identification in your office space. I said, well, Jim, that's a great idea, let's do it. So Jim, um, worked diligently at that for about six months. And at that time, he just couldn't get a handle on the administration of it. And I think he was being frustrated and he had worked in banking for so long that he got a little lazy. So Jim left and I bought his stock at a swan <laughs> price. And uh, I hired a young fella 
who came in and in the course of a week had corrected all the administrative problems, and we've gone great guns ever since. That was 1994. Oh, that's unbelievable. That's fantastic. You're coming up on 30, you know, 25 years now. It is 25 years. Yeah. And I'm still friends with Jim. It worked out well. He and I will be going to Keeneland Racecourse here oh, in geez. Kentucky next week. Oh, geez. So. I, I used to own property right down the street from Keeneland. What a be beautiful. Make sure, you, make sure you wear your big, beautiful hat, Ed. <laughs> it's like all the ladies do, yeah. Geez, that's great. Uh, you know, and the thing is about Keeneland is, is uh, every, you know, you, of course, everybody knows um, uh, Churchill Downs. Uh, and that place, they tell me, is like a pigsty compared to Keeneland. Keeneland is like, is, is a palatial compared to, compared to where they, they do the, uh, the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, Keeneland is absolutely picturesque. It's oh. limestone, it's tradition. And it's only open seven weeks out of the year. Yeah, and so yeah. it, it attracts very nice race cards, and uh, it's picture perfect. Don't wear jeans. Yes, you can't get in with the jeans. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> People are listening to this thing like, what are we talking about? We're talking about one of the most beautiful race tracks in the, in the world uh, where everybody goes, goes to be seen. So uh, Ed Garrett goes to be seen at, at Keeneland. So, hey, Ed. Um, wrapping it up here, let's get, get, uh, you, you promote it again. The name of your website and the name of your company, www.creditimprovers.com. And you're located in Cincinnati. Uh, what's, uh, what's the phone number there? Our toll free number is 1-800-267-9902. And one note about that, one note about that, uh, telephone number is that after hours I have arrangements for those telephone calls to be forwarded to my personal cell phone so within reason you folks on the west coast if yeah. you give me a call after hours you're going to wind up speaking to me directly let me tell you something Ed I wish you could see my notes right here I, I one of my notes with you is Ed answers his own phone I was going to say like you and I are the uh the last two lawyers that actually answer our own phone, but that's that's the same same thing that I do. Um, it, cause first off, because I hate voicemail, but uh, you know it's um, it's amazing. I called you once, and sure enough, you answered your phone. I, and, I, and it took me up, took me back for a second. I was like, wait, wait a minute, is this is this Ed Garrett? Yeah, this is Ed Garrett. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Ed, son of a gun, Charlie Dobbins. Good to hear from you. So that was that's so cool. Okay, folks, I gotta tell you. If you find yourself in that situation where your credit is not what it should be or what you want it to be because you're looking to do something new or you're looking to just get the monkey off your back, don't monkey around with these things on the internet that you see. I, because listen, I've already done that for you and it doesn't work. The only thing that has ever worked for me, for my clients, is working directly with Ed on credit improvers. This is a four to six week process and Ed will, will fix your credit as best it's, as it's gonna get fixed in four to six weeks. The rest of it after that point is you just monitoring what you're doing and making sure you're not making any more mistakes and, and keeping yourself out of the doghouse. Uh, and then, you know what? Do what I did. Call Ed 10 years later just to, you know, to do a little fine tuning and it'll work again for you. Um, so, Ed, I, listen, I, you truly are uh, the type of, of, uh, of person that I love to recommend to my, my clients because I know you're going to do a great job for them. Well, Charles, thank you very much. And again, thank you for the opportunity to speak to your folks. Uh, and my pleasure. And don't forget to, to use the name Charles Dobbins. Uh, when you call in, Ed, and you get your $100 off of both the, the single uh, or the family uh, rate. And uh, folks, don't, don't walk, run to Ed and get this, get this problem solved. Because I'll tell you, there's no better feeling than seeing that big white envelope of credit improvers sitting on your kitchen table when you uh, get home. And you just get in there and sign the, sign the documents and, and get them out the door and let Ed do his, do his, his magic work. So, so, Ed, first of all, Ed, you know, what's it like in Cincinnati today? You know, uh, today's pretty nice. We're, we're partly cloudy, about 68, but I hear there's a storm that's going to swallow about half the country. Are you in that? No. Well, I'm, I'm trying to fly to New York City this weekend in my plane, uh, but and I think I might get washed out. I'm going to try to go see my daughter run a race, but uh, I might not be able to make it there because I think that this 
weather you're, that you're talking about is probably going to hit me uh, this weekend. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think they're calling for 50 mile an hour winds tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, something's on its way, but it'll yeah, be I'm made very home. soon. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've uh, I've flown in 30 knot winds before, and I'm uh, I'll never do that again. So uh, I guess I. <laughs> I'll tell my daughter to send pictures. So, all right, Ed, hey, it was great talking with you. And folks, creditimprovers.com, it'll fix your problem. I, I, I can guarantee it too, because I, I get Ed backing me up and I, know, and I know it works. So, Ed, thanks and have a great week and I'll talk to you soon as usual. Thank you, Charles, take care. Thanks, Ed, take, bye-bye.